Well, who wants to be a millionaire? The People's Quiz, which turns seemingly impossible dreams into a reality. Any single one of you watching at home tonight could walk in here with nothing and walk out with a life-changing cheque for £1 million. Pounds. At this moment, we've got ten people hoping to do just that. Will one of tonight's top ten go home with a million reasons to smile? Let's meet them first and then find out. They are... Shelburne from North Yorkshire. Val James from West Glamorgan. Richard Moxon from South Yorkshire. Danny Bishop from Cumbria. Susan Wilson from West Sussex. Alan Wiley from Lancashire. Duncan Stevenson from County Amar. Stuart Bonehill from Gloucestershire. Ken McCracken from Leicestershire. And Richard Ambrose from Kent. Good waves tonight, everybody. Right, here we go. Time for that opening ten to play fastest finger first. Remember, there are four answers, but only one correct order. As always, whoever gets it right in the fastest time will be the first in the hot seat tonight to play for one million pounds. Nice and quiet, please, in the audience, so they can concentrate. Here comes tonight's first question. Put these Neighbours stars in the order they had their first UK top ten hit single. Jason Donovan, Craig McLaughlin, Carly Minogue, Holly Valance. Some very fast fingers there. I don't know if they were right or not. This is the right order. Um, started with Kylie, Kylie Minogue, uh, back in January 1988. Then it was Jason, Jason Donovan, September. Then it was Craig McLaughlin in 1919. Holly Valance, most recent, in the year 2002. So that's the right order. Now, ten star, as always. I don't think ten got it right. Let's have a look. These got it right. Uh, three of them. Who was fastest? Richard Ambrose in 2.39 seconds. <laughs> you were sitting there looking numb. You were just looking at me numbly going... <laughs> That's a name not unlike my own. <laughs> now, would you like to play for a million pounds? I'd like to play for Right, this is Richard Ambrose, a technical manager from Canterbury in Kent. Fiance Jane is up in the audience, and as we so often seem to hear on this show, it's only a lack of money that has so far stopped them actually tying the knot. Jane has already planned many of the details, including a civil ceremony, followed by a big party in a marquee, and the hire of the venue alone will cost them £5,000. <laughs> However, they are already partly on the way to paying for it, as yesterday both Richard and Jane found 5p pieces on the floor. <laughs> Right, at this moment, then, Richard Ambrose is just 15 questions away from £1 million. If he does get stuck along the way, as always, he has three lifelines to help him. 50-50, phone a friend and ask this brand shiny new audience. Richard, lots of luck. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? OK, question number one is for £100. Which of these can follow a number to give the time? A watch. O clock, O sundial, O hourglass. O clock. That's the right answer. You have £100. <laughs> Question number two is for £200. What traditionally goes with wine and women to suggest a life of carefree pleasure? Telly, song, football, divorce. Song. It's the right answer. You got two hundred pounds. <laughs> okay. Question number three for three hundred. The word velocity is often used as another name for what? Speed, gradient, height, resistance. Speed. It's the right answer. You got three hundred pounds. <laughs> I'm trying to race you up to at least 1,000, which is one-fifth of your wedding tent. Question number four is for 500 quid. Which of these words is used for a person who informs on someone? Horn blower, trumpet blower, glass blower, whistle blower. 
It's a whistleblower. You have £500. <laughs> Question number five, would guarantee you're going home tonight at least £1,000 better off. Here it comes. Question number five of a possible 15. Normally, a linctus would be used to treat which condition? Housemaid's knee, cough, varicose veins, headache. It's a cough. You have £1,000, Richard Ambrose. <laughs> Good man. Five grand for a tent? <laughs> I don't seem expensive, but um, we, well, we don't really know what the prices are, to be honest. But it would be nice to find something that held a lot of people. So how much? I mean, if you come here to help the the budget for the wedding, how much is this thing going to cost then? I don't know, maybe ten thousand pounds. But that includes, you know, a big party for the friends as well. I mean, when are you thinking of getting married? Well, to be honest, if if we kind of came out tonight with with a you know, some money, then Decent this, lump. This, this year, this summer. All right, and if you don't? Next year. Next year. Yeah. OK, you met at a Blur concert. We did. It's very romantic. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> well, how did you have a conversation at a Blur concert? Well, uh, we did Hello, didn't really. what's your name? <laughs> Richard! <laughs> no, we ended up in a nightclub afterwards, and I ended up very hot and sweaty, and uh, Jane was seemed to be the... Seemed to kind of like that, which was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, if she likes me then, she can like me anywhere. So she likes you hot and sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? You're a, you're a technical manager. Yes. But that's very vague. What, what do you uh, actually do? Well, I work for an environmental company, and yeah. we specialise in air pollution work mainly, uh, waste management. So, like, dirty water and sewage yep. and stuff? Yeah, dirty water, sewage. You sound a great catch, you do. <laughs> but it's good fun. It's good, good fun. Good it fun. can get dirty. Yeah. And then you're sweaty at night. Yeah. OK. <laughs> right, listen, you have £1,000, which is good. You have not yet touched any lifelines. You are ten away from £1 million. Take your time. Have a look at question number six. This is for £2,000. In which direction would you travel if taking the most direct route from Exeter to London? Northeast. Southeast. Northwest. Southwest. Exeter. Exeter's London, right? South East. Take your time. Have a good look. North East. Sure. Well, it took a little bit of time to work those those points out, yeah, but. Um, Northeast. I was expecting east, but it's more Exeter is more south than London, so you'll be going northerly and easterly, so northeast. Final answer. Final answer. I can't tell you, Jane, who you're thinking of marrying, thinks it's southeast. Um, you're right, she's wrong, you've won two thousand pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it when you're out in the car, you do the map reading. Yes, <laughs> good plan. She doesn't. She, well, Jane can't read a compass. No. <laughs> Have a look. At question number seven. This is for four thousand pounds. Here it comes. What is the name of the fitness instructor in ITV's Celebrity Fit Club? Max, Bernie, Harvey, Sydney. I think I know the answer, but I'll, I'll ask the audience, please. OK. Uh, right, audience, all on your keypads, please. This is the question. It's worth £4,000. OK. What is the name of the fitness instructor in ITV's Celebrity Fit Club? Now, A on your keypads will be Max. B is Bernie. C is Harvey. D is Sydney. All on your keypads, please. It's worth £4,000. All vote now. It's your call. 5% say Max, mm. 95 
That's quite high. They may all be mad, but that's high. 95% say Harvey. I'll go with Harvey. And you're going to say, oh, yes, Chris, that's the one I thought it was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got £4,000. <laughs> Feeling? I must admit, I'm calming down now, really. Initially, I was feeling quite lightheaded. Lightheaded? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is <laughs> <it> all right? <laughs> Is this true about you two finding, quite separately, five P pieces yesterday? Yes. Where did you find them then? Well we, well, we live in Canterbury and we find money all over Canterbury, but. Um, we so, what happens in Canterbury? People say, oh, there's a fiver, well, I can't be dealing with that. <laughs> it's amazing. If you just kind of keep an eye out, there's, there's pennies and bits and pieces. All, but all we... over Canterbury? Yeah. <laughs> All right, matey. Right, now listen, serious business. You have £4,000. You are three away from 32000 which is the next big milestone. You still have a 50-50 and you still have phone a friend. And most of your phone of friends are their relatives, actually, aren't they? Including your mum, I think. Yeah, friends and family. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mum, uh, Uncle Keith. Yeah. Okay. Right, you have 4000 This is for £8,000. Question number eight. You can double your money here. Here it comes. Uh, Jove is another name for which god? Poseidon, Jupiter, Aphrodite, Demeter, Jove. Jove is another name for which god? Poseidon, Jupiter, Aphrodite, Demeter. I'm tempted to say Jupiter because of the J, but it's, I, I'm not clear on that. Um, I'll have to phone a friend, I think. Now, who would know? Mum? Uncle Keith? Phil. Phil? Phil. Who's he? It's a friend. He's a friend. Okay, yeah. he's not a relative, he's a friend. Okay, um. I see, where's Phil? He's what? He's in the pub. He's in the pub? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Hello. Phil? Hello. Chris Tarrant, good evening. Hello, Chris. How are you? Very well, thank you. Well, now, we're in the middle of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and you're in the pub. Uh, not quite yet, no. I'm still at home putting my daughter to bed at the moment. All oh, right, then you go to the pub. Exactly. OK, just testing. Um, it's just the background that Richard gave us. Well, now, you know what's happening. Basically, the fact that I'm ringing you means Richard's in the chair. Yes, indeed. Um, he's doing OK. He's on £4,000. He's stuck on a particular question. He says... OK. You're bound to know it, he said. Oh, dear. Or words like that. <laughs> OK. Richard, lots of luck. Your time starts now. Jove is another name for which god? Poseidon, Jupiter... Jupiter. 100%. <laughs> Jupiter. Phil, you're a Ro star. Roman god, yes. Yeah, Roman nice father one. of the gods. There you go, Rich. Well, Phil, thank you very much for that. I'll take okay. you, get you a pint later. <laughs> OK. Cheers. See you later. Bye-bye. See bye. you later. Bye. Do you know what, mate? That's it. Tuck his daughter up and he'll be straight down the pub. That's good. Uh, it's up to you. He was very confident, but it's your call. Jupiter, please, yes. <laughs> Would you be horrified if he was wrong? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You know, he's, he's, yes, he's, you trying, yes, he's, he's trying his best. It's your call, yeah? Final answer? Final answer, Jupiter. He did say 100%, which yeah. is pretty good for one of your mates. It's the right answer. He's just got you £8,000. <laughs> now, this is getting a bit, um, a bit serious here. You're two away from 32000 Um You wanted five grand for the marquee. And you reckon the wedding, probably, you were talking about double that. You probably needed about ten grand. You've got eight so far. Yes. But you could now afford a marquee and not invite so many people. True. <laughs> we could have a smaller tent, but still put the money behind the bar. Yeah. <laughs> Good thinking about that. <laughs> um, OK, we've well, got £8,000. Give me a wrong answer here, Richard. You would yeah. drop seven of the £8,000 that you have at this moment. You still have a 50-50. Uh, you can use that and still not necessarily play the next question, but it is worth £16,000. Take your time. Here it comes, question number nine. Who published a collection of verse called Revolting Rhymes in 1982? Penelope Lively, 
Roald Dahl, Jacqueline Wilson, Nina Borden. I must admit, I'm thinking it's Roald Dahl. I don't know the other three. I'm going to have to go with 50-50, I think. OK, it's your call. I better go 50-50, to be sure. OK, computer take away two wrong answers. Leave Richard the right answer and the one remaining random wrong answer. Now, he's still there and Penelope Lively is still there. Yes, I'm going to go for it. You know if you're wrong, you lose £7,000? Yes, yeah. It's, uh, it would be awful, but at this stage, I think I'm going to go for that. What did Jane say when you came out? There's a sort of plan. Uh, gamble at this point. If, if, if you're not sure, give it a go. I have to say, she's looking at you at the moment. Absolute horror. Really? It's OK. It's the right answer. You've just won £16,000. <laughs> Oh, looks good to kill. Now, you have 16 grand, which is good. That's great. That's actually... That's the wedding sorted, isn't it? Yes. Question number 10. There are no lifelines left. Question number 10 is for £32,000. At this moment, Richard is six away from one million. Here it comes. What colour is the beak of an adult moorhen? Blue. Grey. Red, white. I think it's red. It's not grey. It's not white. I might be thinking of a coot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, more hen. You will, if you work as technical manager, environment, cleaning up water and all that, you will see more hens all the time. Will you not? Um, well, maybe they're so polluted they don't, they, they've flown away or something like that. <laughs> um, well, when they were flying past on their way to yes. away, didn't you go, look at the beak on that? <laughs> <laughs> what colour is the beak of an adult moorhen? Blue, grey, red? White is for thirty-two thousand pounds. I really am not sure. I think it's red, but I'm not confident enough to be honest. It's frustrating, but no, I can't go for it. Okay, give him a big hand. He goes away with sixteen thousand pounds. If that had been for £500, what would you have said? Red. It would have been the right answer. Oh! Oh! But all your instincts, I have to say tonight, when you're saying, Jove, it's Jupiter, they, yes. they've been spot on, actually. Yeah. But if you'd lost that, you would have kicked yourself all the way home. Yes. Well, in fact, you wouldn't have had a home to go yeah. back to. <laughs> yeah. You kicked yourself out into... <laughs> An empty park somewhere. Right, Richard Ambrose goes home. He wanted £10,000 for the wedding. He now goes away with £16,000. Well played, mate. <laughs> right, understandably now we have nine contestants left. Very eager to play fastest finger first and get in that seat. Nice and quiet, please, in the audience. Here comes the next question. Put these words in the order they are spoken in the traditional naming of a ship. Sail, bless all God. OK, 
Okay, looks uh, pretty straightforward, but there's nine left and they're against each other and against the clock. Let's see if they all got it right. This is the right order. Um, God bless her and all who sail in her. That's the right order. Now, did nine get it right? I don't think they did. Uh, these were correct. Most of them, but not all of them. Who was fastest? Uh, Duncan Stevenson in 2.92 seconds. Duncan, it's you! <laughs> <laughs> right, there's a million pounds up there. Let's go and win. Right, now here we have Duncan Stevenson, a painter and decorator from Craig Avon in County Armagh. Wife Mary is at home with the kids Ailish, Aileena and Callum. So brother-in-law Gerald is up there in the audience instead. Now, with a big win, Duncan wants to take Mary to visit relatives in Canada and South Africa. And he says he has two huge challenges in life. One is to do a parachute jump, the other is to finish the patio. <laughs> But at this moment, Duncan's in the hot seat, Duncan Stevenson. Uh, he's got 15 questions, three brand new lifelines. That could lead to him winning £1 million. Lots of luck, Duncan. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? Ready for this? Give that a try. OK, question number one is for £100. Complete the name of the famous TV couple Richard and Saunders, Judy, Hutch, Sweep. So, Judy comes. Not sweet. It's Judy's the right answer. You've got £100. <laughs> <laughs> right, question number two is for 200 quid. What's the usual name for the mound shaped nest of ants or termites? Ant mountain, ant hill, ant stack, ant pile. So, I'm you. you have 200 quid. <laughs> As always, we try and race through these first five questions, get you up to at least £1,000. This is question number three. Where is antifreeze usually put in a car? Hubcaps, <laughs> brake pads, exhaust pipe, radiator. Um, the radiator. That'll be the radiator. You've got £300. <laughs> Achieve a lot if you put antifreeze in your hubcaps. Question number four is for £500. What do we call the name and address printed at the top of an item of stationery? Letterhead, letter set, letter press, letter box. Uh, letterhead. You have £500. <laughs> Um, you have all three lifelines. Question number five would guarantee you're going back to Craig Avon with at least £1,000. Here it comes. Which salad ingredient is often found in a sun-dried version? Lettuce, cucumber, tomato, radish. That's tomato, Chris. You have £1,000. We'll play. <laughs> you all right? So here's you from County Armagh with an unmistakable Scottish accent. Yes. Were you born in Scotland? Yes, I was. And what, how long have you been in Ireland? Uh, four years now. What did you go across for? I went with my, through my wife's work, through her job. We were relocated. Oh, I see. And she's from Northern Ireland yeah, yeah. originally. So. Oh, so she's happy and you're sort of adjusting? I'm getting happier. They're very, they make you very welcome. They're very friendly. Absolutely. Yes. OK, right. Now, serious business then. You have £1,000. Um, you're ten away from a million so far. You haven't paused for breath at all. You have all three lifelines intact. Duncan, let's have a look at question number six. This is for 2000. Which country beat Portugal in the final of Euro 2004? Holland, Spain, Greece, England. That's Greece, Chris. Final answer. Final answer. It was an amazing match as well. You got two thousand pounds. Greece beat 
Portugal 1-0. Uh, question number seven is for 4,000. You've still got a 50-50, you can still phone a friend, you can still ask this audience. This is for 4,000 pounds. Take your time, tell me what you want to do. Which of these is a region of Cambridgeshire? Isle of Dogs, Isle of Ely, Isle of Sheppey, Isle of Skye. Uh, can I ask the audience, please, Chris? You can. Uh, audience, first lifeline that Duncan's needed. Um, all in your keypads, please. This is the question. It's worth £4,000 to him. Which of these is a region of Cambridgeshire? Now, A on your keypads will be Isle of Dogs, B, Isle of Ely, C, Isle of Sheppey, D, Isle of Skye. All vote now. Uh, 92 for Ely. One thinks that the Isle of Dogs is in Cambridgeshire. Uh, 6% think the Isle of Sheppey is in Cambridgeshire. 1% of this audience think the Isle of Skye is part of Cambridgeshire. <laughs> <laughs> Duncan, it's your call. I, I think I'll go with the audience, please. What, the 92%? Yes, I love you, Lee. Final answer. Final answer. That's absolutely right. You've got £4,000. <laughs> I just want to share with you, Duncan, the fact that Gerald up there, your brother-in-law, thought the answer was the Isle of Dogs. <laughs> Question number... You're going to get so much stick when you get home. <laughs> Question number eight is for £8,000, Duncan. You've still got a 50-50 and you've still got phone a friend. Here it comes. The phrase alter ego comes from which language? French, Hebrew, Latin, Arabic. What are you thinking, Dunn? I'm thinking Latin. I think ego means the self. <coughs> Excuse me, I think ego means the self, but I'm not sure exactly what language it comes from. Can I go? I'll go for Latin. Final answer. Yeah. You just won eight thousand pounds. <laughs> if you're going to do a parachute jump, <laughs> you're going to have to be a bit tougher than this. Is that it? That's one of your great challenges in life. I would, I've always, always liked to do that, yeah. Well, if you won 32,000, I mean, you know, three kids, three young kids, wife, moved across to Northern Ireland. If you won 32,000, would that be serious money? It would be fairly serious, yes. What would you do? I don't know. It's, uh, you'd have to ask my wife. <laughs> That's maybe. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so basically, you. You win it and she spends it, is the plan, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> right, now listen, let's get there first. You've got £8,000, so you could lose this money. You could lose 7000 at this point if you gave me a wrong answer. But you've got a 50 50. You've still got to phone a friend. You're two away from 32000 Question number nine coming up is worth £16,000. Have a look at it, tell me what you want to do. Whose painting, Boy with a Pipe, sold for a record price in May 2004? <coughs> Renoir, Picasso. Van Gogh, Manet. I think I heard this one as well, but I can't remember. Is you a painter and decorator as well? <laughs> mm. It's not quite the style you do, is it? No, not quite. <laughs> Bit of wallpaper in. <laughs> Take your time. It's worth sixteen thousand pounds. You've got a fifty-fifty to get rid of two if you want. You can phone a friend. I think I'll need to phone a friend, please. Okay, now who would know this? Uh, Alan. Alan? I'll try Alan. Okay, where's he? Alan? No, he's uh, in England, down the south coast. Why would he know? I don't know why, I'm hoping he will. 
All right. The fun, Alan. Uh, tell him the question, four possible answers. You've still got a 50 50 if it helps, and you can still walk away with £8,000 done. So, see what happens. Hello? Alan? Yes? Chris Tarrant here, good evening. Hello there. How are you? Hi, very well, thanks. Um, well, I've got Duncan here who's doing OK, actually. Oh, what, Drunken Duncan? I beg your pardon? <laughs> drunken yes. Duncan? Yes, that'll be the one. Drunken Duncan. He'll be a lot more drunken if you help him as well. He's got £8,000 worth so far. Okie doke. OK, um, but it means with your help we can get him up to 16. OK. Next voice here will be Duncan's. So he'll tell you the question. Still four possible answers. One of these is worth £16,000. All right, Al. Right. right, Duncan, you've got 30 seconds. Your time starts now. Alan. Whose painting, Boy with a Pipe, sold for a record price in May 2004? Was it Renoir, Picasso, Van Gogh? Picasso, Gough? mate. Sorry, Picasso? Picasso, certain. Cheers, mate. You all right? Right, thanks. Good luck. Cheers. Picasso, final answer, please. It's the right answer. You just won £16,000. <laughs> How are you feeling? OK. OK. <laughs> what did Mary say, your wife? What did she say before you came down? There's bound to have been some advice. Um, just the usual, you know, try and win some money. Don't take any chances. And if you get to a certain level, don't lose it, basically. And bring it back. Yeah. yeah, bring it back. <laughs> bring most of it back, anyway. OK, right, now you have £16,000. Question number 10 would guarantee you leaving here tonight with a cheque for at least £32,000, but you only have one lifeline, a 50-50. If you went for this, Duncan, gave me a wrong answer, you would drop £15,000 of the 16 you have at this moment. Have a look at it, question number 10. Here it comes. The stage musical version of the film The Full Monty is set in which US city? Buffalo, Little Rock, Detroit, Cleveland. Now, you have a 50-50 if you need it. It's worth £32,000. Could you use a 50-50, please, Chris? You can. Computer, take away two random wrong answers. Leave Duncan the right answer and one remaining wrong answer. Think it I think I don't know, but I would guess it's possibly Detroit. Well, that's a, a fairly industrialised city. But I don't know much about Buffalo. So there's absolutely no um, hurry at all. Uh, it's your call. You've got £16,000 at this moment. I think I'll have to take the money, Chris. It's up to you. Well, I re I'm really tempted to go for Detroit, but I just, I'm not... Sorry, final, <laughs> final answer, I'll take the money. That's it, final, final answer. Final, 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 final. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. OK, give a big hand. I think the audience are relieved, actually, whatever. <laughs> I can tell you, cos you nearly went for Detroit, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And you were thinking, 32 grand, we're only here once, go for it. If you had gone for Detroit, you wouldn't be racing back to your wife and three young kids. With £16,000, you'd be crawling home with a grand because the right answer... Oh, Duncan! <laughs> the right answer is Buffalo! I think you made the right choice there, Duncan. I think so. Give a big hand. £16,000. Well played, mate. Very well played. Woo!
Ah! Duncan Stevenson very, very wisely called it quits. He goes home to Northern Ireland with a cheque for £16,000. Right, here we go again, then. We have eight contestants left to play Fast Finger First. Nice and quiet, please, in the audience, so they can concentrate. Here comes the next question. Starting at the top, put these teams in the order they finished in the Premiership for the 2003-2004 season. Arsenal, Everton, Chelsea, Wolves. of horror on some of their faces. Um, <laughs> let's see, let's find the right order then. Um, all the real football fans will know this, obviously. Uh, Arsenal first, uh, Chelsea second, Everton 17th, then Wolves down at 20th. So that's the right order. Now, let's find out who was right, and then more importantly, who was right in the fastest time. These were right. Who was fastest? Richard Moxon in 2.82. That's quick, Richard. <laughs> Right, here in the hot seat after his first ever touch in Richard Moxon. And the audience is his fiance, Ina. Yes, another fiance romance is in the air here on Millionaire. Ina's Ukrainian, and with a big win, Richard says they'll name a wedding date straight away. And get this, Ina's also hoping for a Mercedes as a little early wedding present. <laughs> right, 15 questions, three brand new lifelines, one may not be enough, one million pounds. Lots of luck, Richard, let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? OK, question number one for 100 pounds. Which of these phrases is often used to end a letter? Yours beautifully, yours painfully, yours faithfully, yours appallingly. It's uh, yours faithfully, Chris. You have £100. <laughs> You're quite into the, uh, the wedding and the Mercedes money, yet. Yeah? <laughs> uh, question number two is for 200 quid. What kind of geographical feature is popularly known as the Med? A mountain, a sea, a river, an island. Uh, it's a, a sea, Chris. You have £200. <laughs> Mediterranean Sea. <laughs> Question number three is for 300 quid. Which of these is featured in Ludwig Beethoven's full name? Lorry, car, van, jeep. Uh, van, Chris. You have 300 pounds. <laughs> Question number four for 500. What's the first name of the wife of former MP Neil Hamilton? Christine, Alison, Denise, Brenda. Uh, Christine. It's the right answer. You have five hundred pounds. <laughs> she sat in that very chair you're in now. You have five hundred quid. Question number five is for one thousand pounds. Here it comes. According to the nursery rhyme, who stole the tarts and took them clean away? Jack Spratt, Solomon Grundy, Knave of Hearts, Wee Willy Winky. Uh, the Knave of Hearts, Chris. You have £1,000. <laughs> Good match. Right, you have a thousand pounds. You are ten away from a million, but you have all three lifelines. Okay, question number six is for two thousand pounds. London's Grey's Inn and Lincoln's Inn are most associated with which profession? Financial, medical, educational, legal. Can I try a 50-50, please, Chris? Uh, you can. So, computer, take away two wrong answers. Leave Richard the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Educational or legal? Uh, it's legal, Chris. Final answer. Final answer. What was it you told me you did for a living? 
a legal clerk. <laughs> it is the right answer. You've got two thousand pounds. I think it's called pressure, isn't it? <laughs>